concentrations and making solutions. And so chemical concentrations are all about how much of what is in a solution or in a solid. Um, making solutions is where you might do a, you might be doing a serial dilution like what you see here, or you might just be making a solution of you know a 0.1 molar uh, hydrochloric acid. All right, so why concentration? Um, I think that the units of concentration are not that important, although you need to know what they are. Um, there are definitely some advantages and disadvantages we'll talk about. Uh, individually, but what's most important is that you just quantify how much of X is in Y, or is in a solution or in a solid. And there's, depends on what you're doing, but there's several different ways to do it, and it dep that what you're doing, uh, depend which, which expression method you use is, uh, mostly just depends on, on what you're doing. And some are easier for some things, and some things are better for others. So molarity, I think, is the probably the main uh, the main one. So here, molarity symbol M, quantity or units or moles per liter. Uh, it's super common, um, easy way to, really common way to quantify things. Um, a, a subset of that is formal concentration, and that's used for electrolytes. Um, the symbol is F, and the units are still moles per liter, and that's basically where you have something that dissociates in solution. Electrolyte dissociates either totally or partially if it's a strong or a weak electrolyte and uh, so you just say that if it was all dissolved then the charge would or then the concentration would be this and that's it's a formal charge or, or it's a for, sorry it's a formal concentration because uh, you don't actually necessarily know how much is dissolved um, but if it all was then that would be the concentration and the next most common maybe is molality and molality is actually independent of temperature so that's uh, why you might use that instead of something else. Um, the symbol is a small m, and the, the units are in moles per kilogram solvent. Uh, so weight percent and volume percent are basically just the grams of solute over the grams total times 100%, either by mass or by volume. And um, those are, weight percent is frequently used in gravimetric uh, analysis we'll talk about in the next video um, and it is usually when you're dealing with the solid volume percent uh, I don't know it's it's not uncommon like I use a 10% nitric acid bath when I'm washing washing glassware um, but not not definitely not as common as a molarity um, parts per million and parts per billion are the grams of the substance divided by the grams of the sample times uh, either a million or a billion, depending on whether it's parts per million or parts per billion. Um, and those are really super duper handy. Um, they're frequently used in air sampling and in uh, solid samples um, because it's on a it, it, it's easy because it's on a mass basis to do with with solids. All right, so now we're going to talk about preparing solutions. So I'm just going to quickly show you the derivation of the formula. M1 V1 equals M2 V2, which is uh, pretty important. You guys are going to use that a ton this semester, but I want you to understand where it comes from. So here, if you have two solutions, the moles of so the initial solution is the same as the moles of the final solution. So if you're making a 10x dilution, the amount uh, that you add from the first from the stock solution to the diluted solution, the moles of, of whatever it is is going to be the same. So moles is moles per liter uh, times liters so that's m1 v1 basically so then if you know that moles initial equals moles final then you have moles initial times volume initial equals mol molarity final versus vo or times volume final and those are su that's super duper helpful so let me just show you an example of that is a serial something called a serial dilution um, or a dilution. I guess you can do it serially or not. Um, so if you have a, if you want a dilution factor or something like 2x, where you have 50 percent, 50 milliliters of your uh, sample and 50 milli milliliters of your diluent for a total volume of 100, um, you can calculate that by m1 is a dilution factor times v1, which is the sample volume, equals v. M, M2, which you just assume to be 1 in this case, uh, v times the total volume, which is V2. 
Um, so this is really handy. You're going to need this in lab the first week um, to calculate. Well, I guess I already did it actually for you, but this is the type of thing that you're going to need to generate a calibration curve, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later on. And you're going to